Good morning and welcome to the Ask Weldon Show, episode 246. Today we're going to be talking about how to overcome anxiety when solo queuing against pro players, uh, how effective is getting exposed for specialized training, and how do I refine my mechanics to a high level. Welcome back to the show. Again, this is the second day back after my six-month hiatus, and uh, hopefully I'll be kicking it out uh, day by day. I need more questions. Since I've been on pause for six months, people have stopped calling in questions. You can call in your questions to the show on the mobile app, anchor.fm slash Weldon Green is the channel. Anchor.fm slash Weldon Green. If you download the mobile app, you can like go add me, add my profile, and then call in a question. It's really nice because it gives you this radio-esque quality to your voice, like they have some sort of audio processing. Makes you sound really great on air, so you don't have to worry about how you sound. You're going to sound a little bit like a, somebody calling to a radio station, or somebody who's actually casting a radio station. The callers are always sounding like they're in a car. Um, I think there might even be a way to do that on the web now. I'm not sure. But anyway, at the very least, if you go to anchor.fm slash Green, you'll find the podcast channel, and you'll be able to download the app and uh, call in a question. So feel free to do that. <clears throat> Thank you for all of you who do call in questions, and I'll be working through those backwards until new ones start flowing in for the show. <clears throat> okay, why don't we jump into the first question of today? Uh, one second, guys, sorry. There we go. Hi, Willen. I was just wondering, how could I overcome anxiety and nervousness when playing around pros? I'm a Raw Masters and Challenger tier in NA, and I tend to start shaking and play por- poorly whenever I see pros. I usually turn off nameplates, but sometimes I get so nervous when playing around them that I have to like leave and take a couple deep breaths. Um, what are some advice that you can give me so I can reach the top one day? All right. Thank you very much, Freddie, for your question. So I think ranked anxiety is similar at every single level so at first you're playing ranked and you get ranked anxiety and then or let's say first you're playing in front of your brother or your sister and you get like some sort of like stressed anxiety right then you're playing ranked and you start getting ranked anxiety then you're playing ranked but it doesn't happen anymore until a pro gets in your game and then you get ranked anxiety at every single level um it's the same exact phenomenon. It's just kind of like you get pressure again. It's the same for pros when they join a team and they start scrimming. It's really stressful to go from academy to LCS. Then it's not anymore because they've kind of gotten used to it. And then they go from LCS to playing on stage, right? For, from scrimmages to playing on stage, and then it's really stressful. And then eventually that's like kind of like tamped down. But then there's live events like uh, tournaments and big arenas. So... Uh, there's two things that happen. One is you just get used to it over time. So the more that it happens, the more that you your body accustoms to the stress, and then you become good at like handling it. Uh, but you can also recognize how it is you already handle the stress and how it is you already cope with it, and you can like accelerate those uh, by relying accelerate the development of your uh, tough skin by uh, kind of focusing on your coping mechanisms. So I would say look at what you've done in the past already and kind of like rely on that um, and then the second thing that you can do is um, work a little bit on focusing on your own game controlling the controllables and I would come up with a couple mantras that you would tell yourself and, you know like uh, just focus on my own game control the controllables uh, don't worry about who's watching just worry about what I can do um, that you can kind of self-talk yourself down I guess but you don't want to, you don't want to, I would say, pretend it's not happening. What you want to do is have the stress, lean into it, and make the play anyway. So anytime that you're in a game with a pro and you feel stressed out, you should not play more conservatively. You should not uh, take less risks. You should not be less social. You should do the things that you normally do, even though it's harder. That's the best training, is to essentially say like all right this is it's difficult to take the risk but i'm going to do it anyway because i know that this is what i should do and that will develop the resilience over time and also the mentality of uh like facing your fears and just tackling them anyway which is which is mental resilience 
All right, thank you very much for the question. Let's jump into question number two. Hey, well, my question is, how effective is punishment for specialized training? What I mean by that is that I noticed one of my flaws as a player is that I am really bad at calculating damage, both incoming and the damage that I deal myself. This was not that big of a problem as I was mostly mailing frontliners like tanks or bruisers. However, when I tried to learn Vladimir, I got punished more heavily for it, since his kit kind of revolves around uh, damage calculation. So what would be the next best step to fix my problem? Try to learn damage foresight by keep playing frontliners or learning it with Vladimir since it gets m more punished with him. And by the way, I already have 150 games on him, so I wouldn't say I get confused when playing him, just that he exposes my inherent flaws as a player more heavily. All right, thank you, Joey, for the question. So this is a very true uh, phenomenon. This is how actually I got to Diamond for the first time. I realized really quickly, I was playing bruisers in the top lane, and I realized after playing one game on an assassin, I was like, oh, uh, bruisers allow me to play safer uh, because they take more, because they don't punish mistakes as, as much, and so you don't learn as much as playing like a squishy assassin when you engage. Like you can engage a bunch of bad engages with a bruiser um, and get out of it unscathed, even if it's a bad engage or you're doing bad damage trades. Uh, you lose the game in more subtle ways, you know, by having the base after that, and like they get a little bit of vision, and then you know they can force an objective or something. So I switched to primarily just meaning super squishy assassins that needed to make the no matter how far ahead I got in the game, I needed to make the correct decision of like how to play into the opposing team. I don't understand the opposing team's win condition, so I can neutralize it. I don't understand like when to engage in the fight, how to look at my teammates, where they were so that they were distracting, how to pay attention to which skills and abilities the opponent still had. You know, if they could just flash out of my combo, uh, or if they could just like stun me through the whole duration, whether the ultimates were up. And because even though I was, let's say, you know, a couple kills and a couple CS up, I was playing a non-meta, not great assassin, and if I ever made some sort of like error, I would just get Annie stunned and then, you know, focus down. So I think that this is a really important principle to make use of if you want to accelerate your training. Play champions that uh, require a higher level of skill, and that will force you to have a higher level of skill to play them. Yes, very, very true. Okay, let's jump into the final question for the day. Before I do that, I want to remind you Couple things. One, first of all, call in your questions. Um, Anchor.fm slash well and green. Uh, the second thing is the Mac program is not on sale right now. Uh, so even though it says like down below, uh, you know, check out the Mac program at this web address, the website is down. If you already own the Mac program, you can DM me and you can I'll give you access to it uh, like a like a page where where it's hosted, essentially. So you can DM me on Discord, you can DM me on Twitter, and you'll get access to that. Remember, if you purchase the Mac program, you get lifetime membership. So I have it hosted somewhere, and I will give you access to it. Uh, the application that is the replacement for the Mac program is on pause due to the move to LA. Uh, the website is on pause, and sales are on pause due to the move to the US. Like, I'm trying to move the company to the US, but that costs money uh, to make sure that it's legal and above board. So again, that's going to be delayed until I've basically paid off the move and uh, saved saved enough money to get it up and running. If you do uh, really want the Mac program and you don't own it already, you can message that to me in a DM. And I I'm, I'm not really selling it, but um, you know there's there's ways to get access to it. Uh, maybe with like an open donation from zero to whatever dollars. I think I was selling it to twenty five bucks at the end. Uh, yeah, kind of any amount. And so feel free to tackle feel free to tackle that. Uh, no other announcements to speak of. We're doing really good in Korea. Excited for the boot camp to kind of swing into high gear here. And let's jump into the final question. Oh, I have to switch to the questions.
Hey Weldon, so my question is, how do I refine my mechanics to the next level? What I mean by that is uh, that I want to get to a level where I'm not simply only able to land a skill shot, but also I want to take it up a notch. For example, I was playing with a challenger smurf uh, on my D2 games recently, and he did all this crazy stuff on Camille, where he not only engaged and landed his E and his W perfectly, but also at the same time dodged every skill shot uh, w uh, which was thrown at him. So, I mean I main Camille myself and I'm able to land my E if you give me enough time to aim, but I can't do all this, le um, all this um, let's say, fast stuff at the same time. So, how do I refine me my mechanics to a really, really high level? All right. Uh, thanks for the second question, Joey. So it's really important that you saw the person doing this. The first principle is you can't do things that you haven't already imagined that you want to do. Or I guess you kind of can, but subconsciously you're trying to do it anyway. You're striving to do it. So let's say if we're talking about conscious processes, you're only going to be attempting to learn things that you think are already possible to learn uh, or that you've conceived of. So it's really important to look at a lot of footage of people who are doing exceptional things and be like, oh, you can do that. Okay, cool. So that you have it in your mind, um, what it is that you're attempting to do. Once you have the model in your head, uh, whether it's a model that you came up with through theory crafting or whether it's a model that you stole from a pro player, uh, then you essentially need the mirror. So you attempt to do it, you make sure you put that expectation on yourself. Um, so you only, in, like, you engage, and before you engage, you think, okay, these are the spells that could possibly be coming my way, and you uh, commit to trying to dodge them, and then you attempt to dodge them. Uh, and you will fail and succeed, but anyway, you're anticipating it, and you're preparing for it, and then you're attempting to do it. And then you have to make sure that you watch your error. If you're not already good at visualizing the thing that you messed up and then fixing it, then it's really important to look at your own footage and see what you did and didn't do and fix it. So you don't have an incorrect, um, I would say, visualization of what it is that you actually did in the game. So you need the mirror and the model, the model and the mirror, as I like to explain it. Uh, it sounds like you already have the model taken care of, so then you have to have the expectation when you go into the skirmish that that's what you're trying to do, or into the game. It should be your main focus. You can like subjugate everything else to that purpose, um, and make sure that then you check out what it is that you did uh, with the raw footage, or through visualizing it, uh, or what I recommend, which is like visualizing it after the game, and then going back and double checking to see if you were accurate or not in what you remembered doing or not doing, where you remembered clicking um, and if you are, great. So you don't need to look at the footage so much, otherwise you need to review your tape after every single game. That's it. So uh, if you can pull that off, then you can train yourself. Um, otherwise, you might need to do some drills where you focus on mouse movement and mouse accuracy, like outside of the game. If you are not moving your mouse accurately enough or fast enough, that is something that typically people train in the game, uh, and the game trains for them. Uh, you can always try to train that out of the game a little bit, but be aware that it doesn't transfer. So once you achieve that skill on the mouse, then you need to actually transfer that skill to League of Legends. All right, that's it. That's the show for today. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.